Um, I wanted to begin with the very beginning of the text, Tender Buttons, from the section titled, Objects. A carafe that is a blind glass. A kind in glass and a cousin, a spectacle and nothing strange, a single hurt color and an arrangement in a system to pointing. All this and not ordinary, not unordered in not resembling. The difference is spreading. My first memory of Tender Buttons, the text, is being told that I had been influenced by Gertrude Stein before I had read much Stein. <laughs> At the time, I wondered, how could it be that I'm influenced by texts I barely know? But now the idea seems perfectly obvious that we're permeated by iconic texts which suffuse a cultural landscape and offer permission for future innovators whether or not we are aware that this is occurring. Tender or currency is in the air. Once we know, we look more closely. Tender Buttons invites us to look at a book as a possible diagram of the roving relational identities of words, unfixed arrangements, a carafe, word vessels which pour. Begun in 1912 in Spain and completed and published in 1914 in a modest edition of 1,000 copies, this text has become, among many things, a text about influence. In the new centennial edition out from City Lights, we find a collation of older editions and the inclusion of some facsimile pages, along with a stirring afterward by poet Juliana Spar, who points to the rooms of tender buttons as nationless and considers the text revolutionary in terms of aesthetics, not political conventions. She asks, is the room of tender buttons a refuge from the complications of this street, or is the room fractured and torn apart and intruded upon by the street. One might also consider her question as a way to ask, where is the influence of origin? How do words influence words? When is a word an object, and when is it alive? The question, what is the influence of one word upon another or a series of words upon a reader, is only one of multiple narratives which surrounds tender buttons, a text which remains in many ways still mysterious after a hundred years. Stein's titles or subheadings, objects, food, and rooms, which originally were the only titles for this work, call into question a conventional assumed distance between definition and meaning, animate and inanimate, thing and description, any objects and its uses or associations. Tender Buttons refuses to be a text which proceeds by what we might call a familiar grammar. Quote, all this and not ordinary, not unordered and not resembling. Stein's texts often don't resemble her titles, but they do converse obliquely. The difference is spreading. What is the purpose of an object? In Stein, certainly not to be objective. Certainly a word is also an object, an objection is a subject. You may object within this text which celebrates as it rearranges the notion of written convention, which may exist to be ruined, flaunted, or remade as a ceremony, undressing expectation. What is a word garment? And what is the purpose of purposefulness? Influence in Stein means not only can a writer influence a reader through an arrangement of words on a page, but also a writer may influence words themselves, presenting layer upon layer of word mongering as a spectacle for the reader. We hear the unwritten as well as the written text, how we expect word associations to exist and how else they might move. In this way, Stein's influence is a penetration into language, a gaze into the typically and habitually ignored. Language in Stein becomes a mentor to meaning, which can be bent. Tender Buttons reminds us that language is a raw, a raw material with substance and weight, yet 
not static, and that the only thing fixed may be ideas we bring to the page. So, unstuck we become unmired and mucked up in language which will do as it pleases. Tender Buttons is every time when we turn to the page a potent reminder of the pleasure of this medium of letters and a text in which a language itself is actor, thing, medium, and decider and originator of grammar or influence. It departs disorients as a method instead of describing, quote, a kind in glass and a cousin. Aren't all words cousins in a system to not pointing? <laughs> 